Uh, look, Ronki, I've just arrived uh, in Raipur um, after a travel day. Um, obviously, waking up after that sort of first ODI, what are some of the reflections you have from game one? Uh, obviously, an amazing game of cricket uh, to get to, I guess, the position it was in that game, to lose by 12 runs. Um, you sort of look at that and think it was a spectacle to, for everyone to watch. Uh, I think what um, Michael Bracewell and Mitch Satner did to get us into that position was what is an amazing achievement. I think together they sort of they kept a calm head for, for a long, long time and then they also sort of took their chances when they needed to. Uh, India obviously bowled well in different periods of, of that partnership and three out innings earlier on. And um, I think to, to get as close as we did when at one stage we didn't really look like getting anywhere near it, um, I think that was a fantastic achievement. In terms of the context of um, the Indian innings and taking a look at that, obviously with Shubman Gill's individual performance, but in the sort of broader picture of um, their total, he made 200 out of 350 <laughs> runs. Um, can you give a bit of perspective on that in terms of the effort from the bowlers and also his sort of innings as well? Yeah, I think like at one stage, obviously, it looked like they were going to make um, a heck load more than what they actually did. Uh, and then our guys brought it back really well. I think they sort of a bit more disciplined in what they were trying to do and, and they all did it together. Uh, I think that's one thing we talk a lot about is partnerships with, with bat and ball and, and guys did that at, at certain points. Um, and then anyone makes 200 in, in any game of cricket, it's a, a special innings and he was obviously brilliant. It was, it was great to watch even though we're on the oppo opposite side to, to him. Um, but again, it was a sort of an innings that changed the game and changed the momentum of their innings. His last sort of few overs there, it sort of changed the total from being in the lower 300s to 350, so you sort of got to give him massive um, kudos for that as well. So I think it was a, it was a great knock. Uh, Luke, in terms of the squad, um, obviously uh, the first match, he's sorry, was the only player unavailable um, for selection. Um, any update on how he's travelling? Yeah, he's um, tracking along nicely. He's been doing a lot of sort of rehab work to make sure his, his body is getting to, to where it needs to be. Obviously, surface dependent is sort of how we see it going from, from here. It's a different surface again, so his name will definitely be up for selection, and, and he's been doing all the right work to make sure at sort of trainings, and then by game time he'll be available for selection, and then it just comes down to what we think is the right, um, I guess, formation for us in the in the context of what the sort of surface is telling us. Uh, with the amount of T20 cricket that's been played uh, in the last wee while, both franchises and internationally, has that kind of, do you think, changed the way that one day cricket's played? Or sort of as a reminder to people when they come back to one day, is it actually just how much time is involved in a one day game? Uh, very much so. I think that's sort of the, the messaging every team gives at the moment to their players is that understand that 50 overs is a, a very, very long time. Uh, and also, in certain parts of the world, you know you can catch up. And obviously, um, that game last night, both teams made made massive strides in those last sort of 10 overs. I think for us, our last 20 overs, we almost we were going at 10 runs and over. So it sort of it shows that early on in, in an innings, um, you don't really need to be flying along to, to make a big total. So both teams sort of played it quite similarly in that fact. I think the first 10 overs was, there were a lot of dot balls and those sorts of things in there, but, but then both teams made well, 350 and 340. So it shows how much, probably due to the fact of T20 cricket, that you can catch up at the back end of an innings. Do you think that's something that both sort of from both sides, both top and middle orders, will sort of reflect on as they go about sort of sharpening themselves for games two and three? I think so. I think that's also sort of what our plans are going to be as well. It's sort of the, that top order there is just to to give themselves a little bit more time and, and understand the fact that you will catch up the amount of balls you face to to run scored and those sorts of I guess stats that people look at. You will catch up, uh, but again, it's going to be a different surface that no one's really sure what it's going to do in this next game, so then it's, a, it's understanding that as well and, and knowing that you, you give yourself some time to see what the surface is doing and then sort of play accordingly from there. Uh, and in terms of uh, just touching one more point from the first game around um, Michael Bracewell's efforts, um, you yourself have um, obviously batted in that kind of position in one-day cricket and you have found yourself uh, coming in at some challenging times, uh, in fact hold a world record in that spot, but. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how challenging that can be to kind of come in with the game in that situation and then to go about trying to fashion an innings like that? Yeah, it's, I think you go in there, in, in that sort of instance, in sort of two mind frames, it's one, you've almost got nothing to lose because you, you are, in reality, a long way behind the game. Uh, but then also at times you put extra pressure on yourself to be the person to, to change the innings. Uh, but the way B's played, you could just tell he was clear in what he wanted to do. Uh, he was looking straight early against spin and seam and then... He was waiting for balls and then he knew sort of what they were doing. There were different periods where India bowled really well and, and it sort of slowed him down a little bit. Um, but having Mitch out there for him 
was really good just keeping that calm mind and calm head going and and he played beautifully just to to see the ball and strike it the way he did was yeah it was a spectacle to watch that's for sure uh, and I mean you've been uh, in the team environment for both of Michael's um, ODI centuries now obviously the first coming in Ireland and now this one um, here in India what has impressed you about both those innings obviously a lot of people have sort of been surprised that have come in remarkably similar circumstances <laughs> I think it's actually the, the, the calmness that it's it's brought about I think sometimes guys go out there and think they have to do something completely different to what they they naturally do uh, and for Beast that's what he's done really well in those in those few innings where he's he's put performances on he's actually gone out there and just been relaxed and and just realised that he does have a bit more time and and he will catch up he's a He's a powerful man. He's a strong hitter of a cricket ball. So in both sort of knocks and both hundreds, is he's started off a little bit slow, but then realised he sort of stepped it up a gear. And, and then, as happens with, with most batters when you're going really well, you almost know where the bowler's going to bowl and, and you're, you're prepared for it. And, and the, the cleanliness of the striking was just phenomenal. Obviously, he was just one part of the partnership. You just did touch on Mitchell Santner, but... Um, just touching on his innings, obviously, um, again, a challenging role sometimes coming in at number eight and someone who's shown a lot of potential with the bat, but we saw a lot of that talent on display last night. Yeah, and, and Mitchie, he's just calm. That's the, the best way to sort of describe him. When he goes out, you can sort of see that, that aura around him or that persona of him just sort of swaggering out there and looking nice and relaxed and what he's going to do. And, but he is actually very um, calculated in how he does it and he, he's highly skilled in how he wants to do things. Uh, and at the moment, he's been playing some fantastic innings internationally and domestically to show that that even though he is at eight, he can bat a lot higher than that. And, and I guess going in there uh, last night with, with Beast, it was that, that calmness that also kept Beast going uh, and to put on 160 together and, and play it both differently, but bat it really well together. Uh, I think that's a massive, a massive ups for both of them. And just lastly, obviously, we look forward now to ODI 2 on Saturday. We've got a training day. Uh, tomorrow, you touched on the fact this is a new ground and a place that there hasn't been any international cricket for the men's team before. Um, how do you kind of go about preparing and using your training day and getting sorted for Saturday? Uh, it's the main thing is making sure the guys are, are healthy enough and sort of recovered well from, from the last game. Uh, and again, you have to be adaptable to different surfaces. I think that's a big part of it. It's, there's still the basics of cricket and, and how you want to go about it, and each person does that differently. So there's more conversations around how they're going to go about it and what they want to do and, and how they see it playing out. Um, but then again, the surface may change that and it's being adaptable. I think that's something we've done well for a long, long time is adapt to, to what's in front of us. Uh, but it's going to be the same for both teams. I think both teams are a bit unsure of what the surface will do or how it's going to play. So it's going to be quite an interesting start to the game and, and sort of see how it all flows from there.